Midland, Texas, February 24th, 2019. Uh, a, a friend suggested, I did a Facebook post yesterday, and a friend suggested that I make a YouTube video and share this because they thought this was really interesting. And it's uh, about a uh, what I believe is uh, a suspected tunnel entrance and what this house was used for and, and which explains the uh, people breaking into the attic and, and the underground access and, and, and all that. So I, I'm going to get in there. Here on my Facebook is under Buddy Wayne Webb. You can see it there. And and so uh, this story is going to be posted there with all the pictures and all that. And, and basically I'm just going to use that as my, as my guideline. I posted this last night it's called leftover man-sized tunnel pipe okay and, and and i don't want to read too much to you but but i'm gonna go over this real quick it says i, I knew i had people coming to my home but i couldn't figure out where they were coming in from it was the ex-wife who first suggested that maybe they were coming from the ground and that made perfect sense that explained why i couldn't lock them out one day I was sitting in front of in my front driveway and I looked over at the neighbor's yard and I saw this short piece of leftover man-sized tunnel pipe. I bet that pipe, uh, I bet that pipe just like that was running from my home to one of the two manholes on the Home Depot side of the wall where I would see suspicious truckers parking. I always thought it was strange that you would have a manhole right next to another manhole and 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 the one on the west side had the lid off for several years. My guess is this manhole was connected to pipe that ran over to my home, which facilitated the sex trafficking between the people in the attic and the truckers that were coming night and day without unloading freight. It was like a truck stop around here with lot lizards. I'm going to show you all these pictures in a minute. An old black and white aerial okay, uh, shows what looks like a ditch was cut into my backyard, and when you project it out, it looks like it, uh, it, looks, it looks like it connects to some weird buried cinder blocks on the southeast corner of my home, and then towards the t two side-by-side -side manholes on the east Home Depot side. Around 2015 was when the live tree was taken out, which is right next to the two side-by-side -side manholes, and I suspect a cover-up went on around that time. That tree is also next to the telephone pole that has the mystery sudden link cable that goes underground to somewhere, maybe the underground facility. Around the same time that the live tree was removed was when sudden link got a disconnect notice on that service and when, when secret police Naylor died and then two months later secret police Simpson died. Some people have wondered if they were, if they were loose ends that were tied up and somebody put in a disconnect notice on them. It does make sense that if Naylor and or Simpson was going to do the right thing and report the other secret police for their involvement in the capital attempted murder of my life, then that would be motive to kill them, right? Okay. This video was made to show that there's enough room to crawl in the man-sized tunnel pipe. If you drive by my home at 3802 Fair Circle, Midland, Texas, then you can still see this in the, in the neighbor's front yard. And, and this is a very short uh, video here. Uh, spare tunnel pipe over here, about, sitting about 15 foot from my uh, yard that I suspected might have been used for, uh, for the tunnel pipe going behind my house. What is that? <laughs> and 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 I made that one day. And it, it actually, it was just to show that there's enough room to crawl into it, and it was a you know using a little humor, and and a friend you know got inside the pipe and hid while I made the video. Okay, and I also posted some pictures here. These come from Google Earth or, or Google Maps, and you can get that. And and these were from Google Earth. You get dated pictures, so that tells when it was taken there. And uh, we can see here that was October 2nd, 2014. And, and basically what it's showing, this is my home here. I'm shot over here on this side of my home there, okay? One thing I'm pointing out, this thing in the backyard in the, in the neighbor's yard on the east side, and uh, uh, it, 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 it's now gone, and that was a suspected tunnel entrance. It's unknown what that is. Here's where that digging noise is one day. I got a video on that. And what I'm showing is this line of trees back here because here's the alley. Here's the brick wall that separates the commercial residential. Home Depot is up here. This is a secluded truck and unloading lane where I was seeing all the suspicious truckers. And then the two man sized, uh, or, or the two manholes are right over here. Well, that live tree was taken out in this period between October 2014 and here in, uh, 
in, in April of 2016, okay? And what, what I'm showing here, look, the thing in the backyard's gone, okay? And, and if you go to Google Earth Data Maps, you can see when it was put in, the time range, and when it was taken out. At the same time, you see the live tree taken out. And you see Trucker's parked right there, right? And that's where the two side-by-side -side manholes were. And it looked like there was a, a, a I'm suspecting a tunnel pipe, like I, I showed a minute ago, connecting from here over to my house, probably... Maybe right there where the buried bricks were on the corner of my house, and that provided access to the people in my house. And and you're going to see here in a minute what was going on was that truckers would pull up, and and this is the truck unloading lane, uh, or the truck unloading doors are are on the other side, and it's way down here, way down there. But they're parking right here where the manholes were. They parked there. They come up, they pull up, park, not unloading any freight. I'd hear somebody in the attic moving around, burglar alarm go off, whatever. And it's obvious they went over there. They met the trucker, did their deal. And then they come back over here and the trucker drives off. You know, it's like a 24-7 sex trafficking thing. Okay. And so I, I want to show you that. And you can look that up on Google Earth yourself. This is the other side of that dividing wall. Okay. And all this is going to have more importance later. But the, the sudden link cable coming down from that telephone pole right there goes underground and nobody knows where it goes. Okay. We know it doesn't go to the homes because the, the, the TV, coax, internet, and phone cables, they go above ground. And, and Home Depot was adamant. I went up several la layers of, of management saying it didn't go to their store. So it, you know, you had a sudden link cable, TV, internet going into the ground on the other side of that wall and the alley side and nobody to this day knows where it went. But there was a, there was a disconnect notice. So somebody was paying for it. It was connected and going somewhere. It's suspected that the, the underground facility might be in that area. And remember, multiple people have said there's an underground facility here. Here's where the live tree was removed, okay, in 2014, 2015. Here's the, you can see at the east manhole, and about six foot over is the west manhole. That's kind of weird. And, and then my home is this way. And then recently, just this year, I go by there and there's marks on the, somebody marked the curb, you know. It's like, I wondered if they marked the underground tunnel coming in here or something. And, and so, so that's an interesting picture too. This is a real old, oval, you know, aerial map, black and white, and it looks like a ditch was cut in my backyard. This is my house. Remember, I'm, I'm shot over here. Okay, it looks like a ditch was cut, and that ditch is going over to where the manos are. And if when you project it out, it looks like it connects to where the weird center blocks are buried on the southeast corner of my home. And as I said, I wondered if that tunnel pipe wasn't put in connecting my home over to the one of the manholes, and then they're running a, a, like a lot lizards at a truck stop. They're running a sex trafficking business, you know, because them truckers were coming 24 7, standing by it and leaving. They weren't unloading freight, okay. And all that seemed to stop, of course, after that live tree was taken out in the 2014-2015 period. Okay. This picture I took in 2012 right after I was ambushed and shot in my home. And I drove back there behind Home Depot, and, and, I was, and the lid was off. The lid was off of that manhole and the west manhole for, for a couple years. I mean, you know, every time I'd go by, it was off. And uh, my home's on the other side over there. I showed you that a minute ago. And, and so that was the one I suspected that was connected to over Tunnel Bottom House, which has probably been disconnected during the when the live tree was taken out in the 2014, 2015. It looks like a cover up was going on during that time. This picture, I sent it to the, I, I emailed it to then Midland Chief of Police Price Robinson. So, you know, if we had a legitimate press, they could do a Freedom of Information Act and go pull them records and go, yep, the Chief of Police did get this picture. Yeah, back in 2012. He sure did. And, you know, Buddy sent it to him. Okay. Here, one day, I look out there, and Sudden Link shows up. And, and so I walk out there to talk to him. It's dated September 22nd, 2014, and they had a disconnect notice for that cable that was coming down here going underground that nobody knows where it goes. I've got a video on that showing I trace the cable, showing how all the ones going to the house, they go above ground. And, and, then, and then I've got emails from Home Depot where they're saying that, no, no, they, they don't have Sudden Link going in their building. They have Home Depot network, you know. And so all of a sudden you have, you know, uh, you have this coax internet TV cable going into the ground right here in this area that was live. We know it was live because there was a disconnect notice and that would be a paper trail. Somebody could investigate and find out who was paying for it, where it went. I, I got a feeling maybe it went to the underground facility. Rhonda Denman Rogers said was, uh, you know, a half block from my home. That's believed where the also prostitution parties were going, where that young girl was murdered at in uh, 2010.
Okay, this picture right here is taken in front of the house. Okay, and basically what I'm telling here is my attorney set up this meeting with these uh, wealthy and powerful women in the area. Okay, my home's over here on the left, and and uh, and and they wanted to help me. But when I got in the meeting, what I figured out what they wanted to do was move me out of my home. Right, you know, and so and moving me out of my home doesn't provide justice, and it doesn't it doesn't clear my name or or, or identify the people that tried to kill me or nothing. You know. And but one thing they mentioned was the leaning tree, okay? And this was an old Google Earth map I went and found, Street View map, and see how that tree's leaning? That's the one that was taken out. And they had they had actually suggested that the reason the tree was lean is because it didn't have a good base. Well, this is the telephone pole that has the sudden link coax cable going in, and on the other side of there is the two side by side manholes. And you can't really see it right here, but that's where the buried center blocks are right there, is a, is is right there at the southeast corner of my home from the ground level. So that, like I said, that was the leaning tree that was suggested that it was leaning because it didn't have a good footing underneath it. Maybe the underground facilities in this area right here. Because if you think about that coax cable going down here, then it, and, and it doesn't go to Home Depot and it doesn't go to the houses, it's got to go somewhere and it's got to go somewhere close, right? And so um, there's that picture. Around the same time, okay, and in 2014, that that uh, that you know the disconnect notice come in and and the live trees taken out. And around that same time, uh, Mike Naylor, Sheriff Deputy Mike Naylor, dies. Okay, in the line of duty supposedly, and and but just last year we find out from a private investigator that Naylor was the second secret police to arrive at my home minutes after I crawled out. It took six years to get these guys identified. Come to find out the first one was a Martin County Sheriff. A sheriff from a different county shows up at my house minutes after I, I was ambushed and shot in a capital attempted murder and we couldn't get them identified for six years. Come to find out one of them was Naylor and he died in 2014. Okay, And so, I mean, the question that's been asked is, uh, you know, what if Mike Naylor was going to testify against the other secret police? Would they have motive to murder him and cover it up? You know, because it sure is odd timing that not a secret police Naylor dies around the same time and that Sudden Link's getting a disconnect notice and, and the live tree's taken out. Okay. Two months after Naylor died, Kate Midland K-9 police officer Chad Simpson murders his wife, Sander Simpson, and kills himself, supposedly. And then and that left two baby orphan babies right here, okay? And here it is. Midland police officer shoots himself. This was in December 15, 2014, okay? And, and, and my private investigator just last year finds a witness that will testify that Chad said he was one of the secret police in my house that had got accidentally caught on camera sneaking in, stealing evidence, staging the crime scene as capital murder attempt while I was in surgery. And so, once again, what if Chad Simpson was going to testify against the other secret police, you know, and nobody can cover up a murder like dirty cops, right? And we, we, we know there's a dozen secret police that were caught red-handed that he had like cowards for six years, you know, before they finally got identified. So, so maybe Naylor and Simpson was murdered by the secret police gang, you know? And so, uh, Andrew, Andrew is the one that suggested I make this YouTube video. Okay. Here's another picture I took out my backyard. Okay. There's the telephone pole again. The, the tree is missing in this picture. And, and, but the reason I took this picture is because you see one 18 wheeler, and then another 18-wheeler right there, it, it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's another one right here. There's two of them, and they're right there where the manholes are, you know? Well, the loading door's way over here, loading door's way over there. Why did they choose to park right there next to the manholes? And and as I said earlier, what was going on here is I was here, somebody in the attic moving around, setting up burglar alarms, whatever. A truck would drive up. All of a sudden, it'd get quiet, you know? About 30 minutes later, I hear somebody coming back up in the attic, and the truck drives off. You know, it was obvious the person in the attic went over the there and at the trucker and, and you know and I have a feeling it was because it was it was sex trafficking is what it was going on you know and so and and then I found a Lego toy okay on top of my HVAC filter on the attic side okay and I change that filter every three or four months whatever and and you know this course goes up into the attic and and then so I knew this Lego had been dropped recently. Of course, there's a pipe, there's a flexible pipe on top that had to be taken off on the attic side. 
But but obviously that had happened, and somebody, and and that's when I suspected maybe children were were connected with the people getting in the attic, and and you know, and so then child sex trafficking, the fastest growing crime in America, and and they're the ones that were going down the tunnel pipe, and they were going over to the truckers and and running the twenty four seven business. You know, they're even victims of uh, human trafficking victims. Okay, one of the. Uh, the security camera pictures in my bedroom, you know, there's two sets of pictures. There's the ones from January 29th. I was shot on the 28th. On the 29th, the secret police are caught inside my home. The only secret police, or only police officer seen on, on this picture, the the covert illegal secret police pictures and the legal entry to my home is Rosa Rodriguez. This one right here, okay? And Rosa Rodriguez... Uh, is here pointing out on my security monitor, and it looks like she's pointing out where where the where the tunnel entrance is, because that's where that camera was pointing out my backyard. Actually, that camera was on this side of the house where she was pointing at, and and it looks like she's she's pointing out to the other police officers in the room. Yeah, over here, that's where the tunnel entrance is, where we you know where we sell little kids to truckers and make all this money at. You know, I don't know if she said that, but but uh, uh, this was the legal uh, entry. You know, because she came to my uh, hospital that day had me sign a consent to search form, not knowing that she had been caught inside my home three days earlier with the other secret police. Okay, and and once again, here's the open manhole. There, you know, there's where the live trees taken out my home. And but real interesting, Rosa Rodriguez is pointing out. Looks like where she's pointing out where the uh, where you know where the suspected tunnel entrance is. Okay, and and just some of the facts there that I, that I lay out when I when I write this out is that uh, Rodriguez was the person that met me at the 7-Eleven right after I crawled out. And then she said she wasn't there, okay, on the police report. And uh, and then at the hospital, the nurse documents me telling her proof is at my house, which was a voice recorder recording the burglar alarms going off in my home before I was shot. And, but, you know, Rodriguez had her, she, she filled out her narrative. She had a whole different story. She said, Buddy said he was locking up for the night and shot himself, you know. And, but the, but the nurse was sitting there documenting, Buddy said that he was under home invasion. Burglar alarms were going off over and over and over. And, you know, and, and so that's another lie she made up. And then two years later, we find out that she was childhood friends with the primary benefit beneficiary on my on my life insurance the ex-wife her and the ex-wife went to grade school together they known each other since grade school the ex-wife was alleged to be involved in the shooting by her former boyfriend and if i would have died and you know if if rosa rodriguez would have ruled my murder an accident that ex-wife was going to get this paid for in very special home and plus six hundred fifty thousand dollars instead of a divorce from a three-month marriage uh, that was under allegations of prostitution and so so anyway, there's there's old Rodriguez there pointing pointing out the looks like pointing out the tunnel location. This gets real interesting. Okay. Also in the same time frame in 2014, June 29, 2014, I took this picture of this guy looked like a doctor. Okay, in front of the neighbor's house, and that was the neighbor that had the thing in the backyard. Uh, and, you know. Uh, I didn't. I, all I knew is he's driving in a green Jaguar. He had a big white dog in the back. He was in scrubs, and it was an Indian guy. Okay, and it was suspicious because remember the ex-wife had told me the secret is a group of doctors are killing people for profit. And I see this guy show up, and it didn't look like the people there were home. And he was he was just panicked looking, and you know, real suspicious. So I got that picture of him. Okay, and that and that remember that was right there in 2014. That's when the, suddenly gets the disconnect. Live trees taken out. Simpson dies. Naylor dies. Etc. Okay. Well, then the next year, here in uh, June 11, 2015, Dr. Gattaselli over Odessa Heart Doctor is murdered in a murder suicide in Odessa. Okay. And I've had people tell me this guy is this guy, that this guy here. And when you read this article in Odessa America, and you're going to see that the FBI was already investigating him for a money laundering, for structuring of money. And that's in this article right here. And so I've wondered if Gattaselli wasn't murdered because of his connection to the human traffic, an underground facility, uh, et cetera. And that's where the money laundering come in. And maybe he was one of the doctors who was killing people for profit. I don't know that. that somebody can confirm that because he's driving a dark green Jaguar. How many people drive that, you know? 
Since I made my first report to the police about somebody in that area, I've documented many other homeowners reporting the same thing. I've recorded a half dozen police scanner calls in my local area of other homeowners reporting somebody in the attic. More than that have wrote me, and I've had people from other states contact me, New Mexico, California, Oregon, Colorado, Arkansas, Alabama, just to name a few. It's still, even today, I still, I mean, within the last couple of days, I got calls and reports uh, of people of this going on in other locations. This is a little list I made, and these were where I heard off the police scanner or somebody wrote me. These were actual physical addresses in this Midland, Odessa area where somebody reported somebody in an attic. I believe that, that all of these are, are connected to human trafficking, sex trafficking, and... Um, uh, and, and then also make a point, I lived here two years before I figured out that somebody had been in my home, but I have reason to believe it was going on all that time. The next door neighbor told me one time, the last four people living in your home didn't live there long. Ha ha ha. The last one is dead and I crawled down on my hands and knees to save my life. Okay. I didn't think that was very funny, but basically uh, they didn't plan on getting caught. So there's probably a lot more homes and the homeowners don't even know it. Okay. That their homes are rigged. Okay, and then my Hobbs home, Hobbs, New Mexico, is where I was transferred here with my company, 25-year company man, in 2008. In 2002, my daughter noticed a light on in my attic of my Hobbs home. Well, at the time, I ended up I assumed that I was going through a divorce, and I'd caught that ex-wife, Cindy, sneaking in my home. So I assumed that she was the one that had got up in the attic and was sneaking around or whatever. You know, I had, I, you know, I didn't know all this other stuff at that time or whatever. And the, but last year, and she did pass away after this, but last year, you know, I, I said, Cindy, we know you're in my house. I had proof of that. I said, but were you in the attic? And she wrote back, I wasn't in your friggin' attic. And then I thought, I think she's telling the truth, you know? So if she wasn't in the attic, that means somebody else was in the attic, which is sitting there going, I wonder if that Hobbs home was rigged. I lived there for 16 years in this Hobbs home at 7611 Roland Meadows in Hobbs, New Mexico. And actually what happened was we painted this living room over here in, in this picture and right there where that beam is, there's a little crack and you could see up in the attic. And that's where my daughter noticed there was a light on in the attic. And w since I had just painted that room with the kids, I knew that light wasn't on the week before. So somebody had turned that light on, you know. And so uh, that the question's asked is this home in Hobbs was rigged. And maybe all the time I lived there, 16 years, it was rigged. And it was the same thing going on and I didn't even know it, you know. And interestingly, that Hobbs home was built from my first in-laws, Ann and Don Calloway. And it it was uh, my first wife, ex-wife, Tammy Callaway, that helped find me that home. Her husband was a realtor, Mike Burns, and uh, and got me in that home in 93. And they built that home in the one next door, which they lived into. They lived in. And then Don Callaway died just a couple weeks before the murder attempt on my life. And then, and then about a year after I was shot, then Ann, my former mother-in-law, marries my, my dad. And that's when he quit talking to me. Okay, and so then the question is is rigged. You know, maybe 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 they know something about it being rigged. You know, and so, anyways, uh, that that's what I believe is is happening here. That and explaining that why well we still have people breaking into the house, but why? And I believe the reason that people are still breaking the house is they're protecting the underground facility. I have multiple people saying there's an underground facility here. I believe that's where the old show parties are. You know, were held where that young girl was murdered at. Because imagine when this gets exposed. Okay, well then all of a sudden people are going to start asking about that dozen police that was caught in my home still in evidence stage in the crime scene, or the last homeowner that died and had two death notices in two different towns, or the young girl at the oil show murder. It's very important that they protect that underground facility. So that, that seems to be a little unique with my home is not only that, that, um, that, that, that it's rigged and they were doing this 24-7 sex trafficking business with a trucking lane back, but, it, but it's also connected to that, to that underground facility. Remember a couple of people said it was a million dollar underground facility and, and that one woman I recorded her on the phone, she said pedophile parties were going on there. This is Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. Talk to you later.